Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing the top 5 worst queens in Wings of Fire ranked. Throughout the course of the series, we see a lot of fantastic queens like Thorn, Glacier, Snowfall, Morhen, Ruby, and Hazel. But there are quite a few queens throughout the history of Pyra and Pantala who weren't the greatest rulers. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing 5 of the worst queens that have ever ruled the tribes. Each one gets worse than the previous, so I'd recommend sticking around until the end. This video does contain spoilers for nearly every Wings of Fire book, so if you haven't finished the series, then I'd recommend clicking off. Also, before we start the video, huge shout out to my patrons. Crazy Roblox Man, Lord is Opod, Drag1195, Springtail Productions, and Three Moons. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Links to their social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Coming in at number 5 is Queen Coral of the Sea Wings. As many fans have pointed out, she can be quite abusive and is easy to manipulate, as shown when Blister could easily bend Coral to her will in order to get what she wanted. She's not higher on this list due to the fact that she doesn't really have malicious intent in her actions, but she's still considered an awful queen. From threatening her own daughter if something happened to her egg, to even murdering subjects in front of her youngest dragnet out of anger, I think it's safe to say that Coral is not a great queen. She also doesn't really care about her subjects, simply dismissing a deadly injury as nothing more than just getting blood on one of her favorite rugs. That doesn't sound messed up. I don't know what is. Coral is incredibly selfish, easily manipulated, and even resorts to straight up brutality if a dragon disobeys her, accidentally or not. Number 4 on the list of worst queens is Queen Battlewinner of the Nightwings. Though we only got to see her briefly, it didn't take long to hate this awful dragon. She was totally willing to take over the rainforest if it meant that her tribe could be safe, showing no concern at killing the entire tribe of rainwings if needed. She greenlit the experimentation that was done on the docile tribe as well, and allowed Mastermind to continue building venom-proof armor to fight them off with in case they fought back. Metalwinner even helped create the fake prophecy in order to manipulate the tribes, that way the Nightwings could take over the rainforest and find a new home. She was shown to be cruel to her subjects on many occasions, as shown when she had vengeance thrown in lava due to him upsetting her. Battlewinner was incredibly selfish and possessive over her throne, not willing to give up her power to greatness after her injury, and, even in the last moments of her life, still refused to bow down to glory, even at the offer of peace in a new home. She would have risked killing her entire tribe if it meant that she couldn't be queen. Badwinner is also shown to not care about the finer details, mainly highlighted when she was asked about how she would survive in the rainforest without her cauldron of lava. Though it was pointed out to her that it would be impractical to transport the whole thing with her inside, she simply brushed it off and didn't seem to show much concern. All that mattered to her was herself, and she would risk anything, even the lives of others, to stay in power. At number three, we have Blister and Burn, the princesses of the Sandwings. I know neither of them ended up a coming queen, but since each of them did rule for a time during the war, I feel as though this needs to be discussed. Blister is manipulative and often uses her intelligence for deceptive purposes. Often using flattery to gain the trust and respect of others, Blister was knowledgeable in manipulative tactics. Even dragons like Glory admitted to fearing her, even going so far as to say she was one of the scariest dragons in Pyra. Everybody's fear of her is well deserved, too. Blister often used torture to get what she wanted, and thought of herself as the smartest dragon in Pyra. She took advantage of other dragons' emotions in order to bend them to her will, and kept a tight hold of her allies. She would be totally willing to kill her own sisters if it meant that she could be queen. As for Burn, she was often described as being worse than her sister. She had horrible experiments in which she would torture and mutilate animals to see their reaction, enjoyed war and watching others suffer, had an obsession with oddities. Burn even treated those who were loyal to her unfair, as shown when she severely injured Dune and threatened Six Claws. She often examined the six talons he had, and always reminded the general that the moment he died, she would have her soldiers cut off his arm and bring them to her, to put in her weirdling tower. Yikes. No wonder Six Claws and Dune fled from Burn the moment they got the chance. And to make matters worse, she collected oddities and stuffed them to observe in her weirdling tower. From hybrids to humans to dragons with genetic mutations, anything that fascinated her would soon meet its end. Number two of the most horrible queens in Wings of Fire would be Queen Scarlet of the Skywings. This power-hungry queen was one of those selfish dragons in Pyra, and she had a similar interest with Burn to watch others suffer. Scarlet thought highly of herself, often commissioning tapestries and portraits that depicted herself, and forcing other dragons to respect her greatly. 
Majority of the kingdom feared her due to her insanity, as she often scheduled battles in her royal arena where she would force prisoners of the war to fight each other for her own entertainment. Scarlet took joy in anybody else's suffering and didn't hesitate to abuse and manipulate Peril, even kidnapping her as a newborn dragonet so she could abuse her fire scales for her own malicious purposes. Thankfully, she isn't in power anymore, but it still sends chills up my spine to think about all the awful things that occurred while she was queen. And finally, at number one is Queen Wasp of the Hive Wings. She's so mentally unstable to the point where, if her thoughts are spiraling out of control enough, she'll kill another dragon in order to calm down. Wasp's extreme paranoia other dragons turning against her resulted in the idea that only control can keep others in her grasp. She went to the extreme of mind-controlling her entire tribe as soon as she got the chance, showing no concern in forcing them from their homes to do her bidding. Wasp cared very little about the safety of others unless she was the one who suffered from their pain. She'll even abandon her subjects if she thinks helping them will affect her or require effort. Instead of killing her prisoners, she would often capture them instead and force them to be soldiers in order to do her bidding. With the help of the Breath of Evil, Monster was able to gain control of nearly the entire continent of Pantala at one point in time. She has such a huge grasp on her subjects, not only with the other mind controlling them. She deceived her tribe for years into thinking that the Book of Clear Sight wanted her to be the queen and decimate all of the Leaf Wings even going to extremes in order to prevent the truth from being out. She forced the Silk Wings to agree with peace treaties and behave as slaves to the High Wings, believing that they were the superior tribe. If Wasp had a position of power, she would always abuse it in order to get what she wanted. She considers herself evil, living by the ideology that the world is evil, and she must be the most evil in order to survive. Anyways, what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.